One of the key capabilities of vSphere Plus is bringing the enablement of developer experience on top of vSphere-based clouds powered by vRealize Automation Cloud. When we click Activate, we get a screen that discovers supervisor clusters enabled with vSphere with Tenzu. We can select a set of consumer users or groups that will have access to the supervisor clusters and can provision their infrastructure using Kubernetes CLI, API, or cloud-like modular UI. We also bring in traditional vSphere clusters into the fold by enabling a more traditional experience with provisioning via the self-service catalog. This capability simplifies administration tasks by allowing vSphere admin to set up a self-service infrastructure for your developer's consumption and manage it with governance and control in a few clicks. Now that we have activated the developer experience in vSphere Plus, the entitled users can log in into the Cloud Services Portal and launch via Realize Automation Service Broker to access the cloud consumption interface. Users can then select Filter on Projects and click on the Supervisor namespace from the left menu to create new and or manage existing Supervisor namespaces to then deploy infrastructure such as virtual machines, Tenzu Kubernetes Grid clusters, and storage volumes. Let us go ahead and click New Namespace to create a new Supervisor namespace within our project. Users can create Supervisor namespaces from multiple assigned and predefined Supervisor namespace classes. Each namespace class is configured with different resources and capabilities, such as specific storage classes, VM classes, content libraries, and predefined resource limits that will apply to the Supervisor namespace we are creating. Let us go ahead and select the Explore Large Namespace class. We will provide a name for the Supervisor Namespace class called Elastic Sky. The Supervisor Namespace will be created on the Supervisor cluster mapped to the Explorer US West region. Once created, this Supervisor Namespace will be accessible to all project users. We can use it as our own workspace where we can provision a set of resources and services that are isolated from other projects. Clicking into the provision namespace will take us to the namespace summary page where we can inspect its configuration. Clicking view on the virtual machine tile will take us to the virtual machine page where we can create our first Redis machine. We will click on create VM to create a new virtual machine within the Elastic Sky Supervisor namespace starting with providing Redis 1 as the VM name and selecting Ubuntu 2204 server as the VM image. Notice the YAML generated manifest for the virtual machine gets populated based on our selection. We will then select our VM class as best effort small that will configure our Redis machine with two virtual CPUs and four gig of memory. We also have the option here to use a couple of advanced settings such as persistent volumes, SSH public keys, and more. For our demo, we will configure a load balancer to expose the Redis application on its default port 6379 as a virtual machine service that will allow us to route traffic from the external network to the intended ports on the VM. Notice again the generated YAML manifest for the load balancer getting populated based on our settings. We can also use the cloud config section to specify any data, configuration, or scripts that will be used to initialize and configure our Redis server. This is based on Cloud Init, which is an industry standard to help set up things like networks, storage devices, configuring SSH access keys, creating users and groups, or installing applications. We will click Next to review our final configurations and also the generated YAML files in the viewer for what we were about to provision. Notice here that the user can download the YAML files and use them to create the same objects or modify them to create new objects from the kubectl command line. Let's click Deploy VM to deploy our virtual machine Redis 1. Once the VM is deployed and is in a ready state, we can click on the provision machine to inspect the VM details, its health status, and the active generated YAML for this virtual machines. Another option we have here for a true VMware Cloud Developer Experience is to use the kubectl CCI plugin to interact with the cloud consumption interface within vRealize Automation Service Broker. Users can log in from the command line using an API token provided by their cloud admins with the required privileges. Once the user is logged in, the kubeconfig context gets created based on what projects and namespaces they are entitled to. 
The user can then set his kubeconfig context to the Elastic Sky Supervisor namespace where he wants to create the virtual machine within the CCI Explorer project using the kubectl command. The user has created a Kubernetes manifest to provision a second Redis machine called Redis2 within the Elastic Sky Supervisor namespace. The YAML file configures the desired state for, virtual, for the virtual machines, virtual machine service, and secret objects. Similar to the UI, we also are passing the required cloud init code to set up users, SSH keys, and the packages and commands we need to set up Redis on the provisioned virtual machine. Let us go ahead and deploy the YAML file to deploy Redis2 virtual machine. The user will use kubectl command to create the virtual machine from the Redis2 manifest YAML file. We can also check our deployment by querying our object's status using kubectl command. Here is the user getting the status of the virtual machine and the service objects. In the output, we can see two virtual machines, Redis 1 that was created from the CCI UI earlier, and this Redis 2 that we just deployed with the kubectl command, both powered on with primary IP addresses. We also see the load balancer service for each of the VMs with an external IP that we can use to connect to the Redis application running on both VMs over port 6379. Let us quickly recap what we just did. The developer logged in and set his context using the API token provided to him, deployed a virtual machine from the Kubernetes based manifest, get information back on his deployment. If we go back to the VRIS automation service broker UI, we see also our two provisioned Redis machines.